All right, y'all. It's your girl, Pretty Diamonds. Uh, I like to give a shout out to, you know, Straight Official Magazine as well as straightofficial.com. You know, check them out. All right, y'all. Here y'all go, man. It's another episode. Straight Official Magazine, Goat Vibes interview, man. Hosted by DJ Swag 100. You know, representing Philly Fleet DJs, man. We in the building worldwide. We got a special guest today. Fleet model. Fleet model. Orlando, Orlando Florida's baddest. Pretty Diamonds, how you doing? I'm doing good. What's up, y'all? Well, um, we just gonna get right into it. So, you know, um, how long you actually really been into the modeling thing? You know. So I want to say started when I was about ten. Um, after my mom passed away, cause she passed away when I was younger. Um, so my older sister, she took us, like she took us in and stuff like that. Um, it started with there with that. It was just like little gigs here and there. Um, I did a JC Penny fashion show. Um, I did a Disney casting. Um, kind of slowed down on it a little bit. Um, and then with me just taking like just random pictures, um, I went to a fleet event in Jacksonville, Jacksonville down in Jacksonville, and I had a couple people come up to me. They like, yo, you're mad pretty. Like, do you model? Like, would you like to become a fleet model? And you know, they're explaining to me like what what they had going on, the type of organization. Um, from there, it just went from me throwing in an application, from doing an application to speaking with first class. Uh, speaking with first class, our interview, I felt like it was like two seconds. And she was like, I love you. Um, I want to go ahead. I want to bring you about. So I'm getting back into the gist of modeling. How was it like, you know, being younger and, you know, working with Disney and stuff, things of that nature? It was, I'm going to say at first, it was like a little bit nerve wracking because, you know, Disney is like, big um so it was nerve-wracking um you know sometimes you'll get the part sometimes you wouldn't get the part but that's just for something you just don't give up on it you keep going and keep going right um the jc penny fashion show i would say was the most exciting for me um because it was just the fact of me being like 11 12 years old walking in the runway at the mall for like in jc penny and jc penny <laughs> they have those all over Florida so just seeing different people come up to me and be like hey she did an amazing job and I'm like 12 years old right um that was pretty that was pretty decent to for me as well um another thing that I really don't get into no more is when I was like when I was 12 um I sung the national anthem at our Amway arena for a football game wow so that was pretty dope too right so um when you was coming up and you was getting into the modeling and stuff, did you like really study the game? Like, did you have like a model that you was looking up to, you know, as like, yeah, I'm gonna be like her or better? Oh, indeed, Tyra Rank, Tyra Rank. I stayed watching America's Next Top Model. Um, I would see the gist of even after every show, I would get up, get in my mama heels, walk to and from, you know, um, looking at the mirror. Um, but I would definitely say it was Tyra Banks just from watching them, um, getting like the intel from some of the models she cut, what to do, what not to do. Um, she actually taught me the whole thing where it's called smizing, where instead of like sm actually smiling, you're doing it with your eyes and you're showing it with your eyes. So I definitely learned that same technique from her. Okay, okay. So Tyra Banks, is it any any other though? Like is you got like a top three people, you know? Um I'm just trying to see, this, trying to see your flavor. I'm just trying to see your flavor. Um I would say mostly no. It was mostly Tyra. I was mostly engaging in. Um and she it's another girl. Her if I'm not mistaken, her name was Eve. Cause she actually won one of the America's Next Top Models. So Tyra Banks and Eve was definitely the main two people. Cause Eve, if I'm not mistaken, she was on there like twice before she actually won. Okay. Okay. So what's the hardest thing for you, you know, right now, as far as like that you feel as though as a model where you want to put yourself, where you, what, what is the hardest thing for you to um conquer right now? Um, I would say being in one place. Be even though I'm from the Orlando, Florida location, um, I feel like if I was to, you know, branch out and go to like different states, I'll probably see a lot more. Right. Um, because mostly down here in Orlando, you know, they're doing the rapping and the singing thing. 
Whereas if I was to go to Atlanta, they have so many castings in Atlanta when it comes to, you know, modeling. Or if I was to go to New York, you know, New York is known for it. Right. So if I was to like branch out and to actually like leave out of Florida, even though I wouldn't forget where I came from, I think I'll be doing a lot more. Right now, you know, uh, in a modeling game, you know, um, pretty much it's so many different ways and different routes, you know, you can go. Are you looking to be a fashion runway model? You know, you could be a hand foot jewelry model. You know, you can be a, a magazine publishing model. Like what lane are you really trying to conquer when it comes to modeling? Um, Mostly I would say, I don't think I would do like the jewelry. See, I'm the type of person like, I want to be out there. So I'm going to show my face. I want people to remember me. So it definitely would be something where like I'm front stage, front cover. You're getting placements and stuff. You you look yeah. Placements. Okay, understood. Understood. Um, what do you think is, you know, models have fans too. You know, and they got people that follow them. So you know, what do you want people to take from you? You know, when they see your pictures or they see you in a future movie or a future video. You know, see you in person. Like, what do you want? How how do you want them to view you? You know, as a person. You know being a model so i know a lot of girls my age especially in my generation are like a handful 100 percent hands down i want me coming out being a model and getting into the gist of it to actually show them that it's something else that they could do like to you know get people to notice them instead of half of the stuff that they're doing now so i actually want to be a role model for the generation of females in my generation right right so um, what else you do outside of modeling? Like, do you, you know, uh, do you do any charity work? Do you, you know, what else you got going on outside of modeling? Um, you know, other people to support you in that avenue. So outside of modeling, I bartend. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I be in the nightclubs most of the time at nighttime bartending. Um, I work at a club called Invet. I actually work there tonight and it's Labor Day weekend, so I know it's gonna be drastic. Right. Um, when I first started there, I was doing everything from bartending, bar back into bottle girl. And I'm like, hey, this is just a lot for me. So I just stuck to the bartending part. Um, I do have my regular nine to five. I do work for the state. So I work for DCF. So <laughs> I do have my little regular nine to five to, you know, help support, you know, in order to give money, you gotta make money. So Right. I definitely, that's like background with me. Definitely. So, um, what's the, you know, how I feel being part of the Fleet family, you know? Um, it's actually, it's dope from the vibe with, cause like they came down here one time in Orlando, they actually came to our club. That's how I actually seen it. And they were telling me, um, about the event, the conference in Jacksonville. So we just up and we went to Jacksonville, even though it was like last minute. So we ended up having to get a hotel out in St. Augustine and then driving 30 minutes in, like, every time we wanted to go to Jacksonville. So initially when we got there, you know, with me not being part of the Fleet, the fleet fam, they had an event at 1904. But it was, like, all exclusive. Um, I guess a lady overheard – well, her name is Miss Tan. I know her by Miss Tan, uh, DJ Miss Tan. She overheard us talking. She was like, hey, I got like 12 badges. Y'all can get one of mine. Just go ahead and go in there. <laughs> so she ended up giving us one of her badges. Then we went into the club in 1904. And from there, you know, I had people coming up to me. Like the whole vibe was just family organized. Like, you know how you go to some events in the city and something pop out, like either a shooting or somebody getting into like a bra. It wasn't, it wasn't like that with me. It was like nothing but family. Right. It's like I liked it being an environment in our culture and everybody just vibing. Right. Is it Pacific brands that you would like to actually work with as a model? Victoria's Secret, most definitely. That's that's number one right there. Is Victoria's right, Secret. Is Victoria's Secret number one for you. Um, I'm not ashamed of my body. So um I'll be okay with showcasing it and being in lingerie or being in like their little sports attire. So Victoria's Secret would definitely be one. Uh, Forever 21, uh -huh. um, I shop there a lot, would definitely be another. 
Um, but those are like the main two that, but definitely Victoria's Secret is number one for me. Definitely, definitely. So let everybody know how they can contact you, you know, how they can book you. So my Instagram is pretty diamonds underscore. That's P R E C C Y D I A M O N D S underscore. Um, you can find me on Facebook under Diamond Adorley, A D O R L E E, or you can email me at Fleet Model Pretty Diamonds at gmail.com. Be sure you're going to be at some of the up and coming fleet conferences that's going on, you know, so definitely people will be able to tap in with you. But um, so basically, you know, we got. It's, it's an interview, so, you know, we got nine fun facts, you know, so we're going to get some nine good questions up out of you real quick, you know, you know, and try to be honest, all right? Okay. All right, so question number one, who got the most swag, up north or down south? Down south. You wild. Why you <laughs> down south. I mean, of course, I'm gonna say down south because you know that's where I'm at. Like, I ain't really been up north to you know kind of feel out y'all vibe. It might change when I get up there, but from now, from down here, of course, I'm gonna always say down south. Oh, so that was a bias answer. Okay, I <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, but, Tracy, bugging, ain't she? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trust they got this, man. <laughs> My bad. Go ahead. Bro. So, question number two. You know, what type of bag lady are you? Are you Chanel or are you more like, I need a Birkin? I'm simple. So, I'm more coach. I'll go into coach. I even go into Aldo. I'm a I'm a simple type of female. It don't take too much to you know make me happy. You can bring a rose or a card, and I'll be straight. Okay, okay, okay. Now, on the date into you know, is it buy me something we can date, or is it you know we can date and then I'll put a expense on you? Um, it's more so. We can date, and then we'll get into that part. I'm not going to be like first quarter, like, hey, in order for you to mess with me, you got to pay this bill, this, that, and the third. No, it don't work like that. I'm independent, so I pay my own bills. It's more so me getting to know that person, and we go from there. I feel like in a relationship, it should always be 50-50 no matter what. Okay. That's how you keep more bread in your pocket. Okay, okay. Now, question number two. Your boss that work? Or boss that give orders? I give orders. (laughs) I definitely give orders. I can definitely say I'm always definitely giving orders. I'm always telling people what to do. Especially in bartending. (laughs) If y'all ever come down to Florida. You know, do you help out? Is you, you a boss that help out? Like, you know. Oh, yes, most definitely. I wouldn't tell somebody to do something I wouldn't do. Most definitely. We can do it together. Right. Okay. So, okay. um, but me from a manager experience, because I've been in management and with giving orders out, is definitely with giving orders. But I wouldn't tell them to do something I wouldn't do. All right. Now, it's a music question. We're going to see how, how good you know music. It's like a top. It's like a top question right here. All right. Okay. You from down south? Gucci man or Jeezy? Jeezy. Why Jeezy? I like Jeezy. Um. I just feel like I I just vibe to his music a little bit more than Gucci man. Like, I listen to his music a lot more than Gucci Man. Especially, like, when he got locked up and he disappeared for, like, the time frame in his, like, career. Um, But definitely, it was Jeezy. Now, Gucci might have a little bit more hits. I know y'all seen the verses. (laughs) (laughs) I know y'all seen the verses. And Gucci Man was throwing shots at the men. (laughs) Right, right. But I definitely, I'll go, I'll pick Jeezy. All right. Now, for the ladies... We talking hip hop. It only could be one, Nicki or, or or Cardi. Which one? I'm not a big Nicki Minaj fan, so I'm gonna say Cardi B. Mm. Mm. Okay. So what is it about Nicki? You you know you're not really tapped into. 
I don't know. I just never really got into her music like that, even when she first came out. Um, even when she went with Young Money, I never really got into her music like that. Um, I would listen to Trina before I would listen to Nicki. Mm, okay, okay. So, I mean, how you feel about Cardi since you name, you know, you went to that side? Like At Cardi, I can definitely say she was a role model because not like crazy like role model. Don't take everything she do and run with it. Now. <laughs> I mean, like she was on Love and Hip Hop and. The dude, DJ Stuff, told her, like, basically, she wasn't going to make it and look at her. Right. Like, she done took what he said and ran with it and built something. That's the type of attitude you got? Definitely. Okay. I'm a, I take criticism very well. I'll take whatever you got to tell me, throw it in, and make it better. Okay. Okay. So, you know, um, if it's other girls just trying to pursue, you know, the game like you're pursuing the game, you know, what would you tell them? Keep going for it and don't let up. Keep your foot on their neck. Okay. Always. Okay, definitely. So what inspired you to keep going? Um, I would definitely say my kids. I have two little ones. Okay. So I have a boy and I have a girl. And especially for my daughter, um, I wouldn't want her to see, like, mommy started this and she quit that. Or for my son, mommy started this and she quit that. I'm always distilling them. Once you start something, you always finish. Like, I have so much under my belt. Like, literally, I woke up one morning. I'm like, oh, snap. I'm a whole Florida notary. And I forgot I was a Florida notary. Right. I got so much under my belt. Like, anything that I can learn, I'm going to only ask the person one time before, like, they give me the run around and I go figure out how to do it myself. Right. Right. So you'll go get it. Definitely. Need more like you in the industry. That's why we conduct these interviews because, you know, a lot of people just see, they see the, the faces, they see the people in the music videos or, or whatever, but they don't get to actually get to know the person. So, you know, getting to know you, this also help you sell yourself as well. So, you know, that's why we try to tie these interviews in. Just the whole thing about goat vibes, you know, one day you're going to be a goat, you know, and you follow in the footsteps of the goats, you know, and you carrying yourself right, you know, so we appreciate that. So let me ask you, let me ask you one more question, right? So, if you could make any change in the modeling game so people can get on like this and you had the power to, because this is the career you're pursuing, what would it be? What would be the number one thing you, you'll change? Um, the saying is, it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's something I would change. I would feel like it should be what you know and not who you know. Because some people, you know, a lot of people, they ain't got that, you know, silver spoon of people to, you know, they can reach out and branch out to so that they can be put in the modeling industry. But, you know, some people, it come naturally. And if somebody could see your work, whether somebody go off seeing your work, whether than going off what somebody else said. Right. Okay. Okay, so I appreciate that. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, um, I'm gonna open the floor up to some of the other fleet, you know, people that's in here, you know, and it's a couple of them in here besides fleet, and you know, I'm gonna let them ask you some questions. Pretty dumb. What's going on, DJ A yeah. Philly Fleet? <laughs> How you doing? Good, and you? I'm all right. How long you say you've been fleet? When'd you come in? Um, I actually just came in maybe about a month ago. She came oh, in wow. to the conference. Did you go to the conference? Yes, in Jacksonville, so, yes. So what do you think of it? What it you think of, my, my, my main question is what do you think of Fleet overall from what you've seen? From that, I just basically seen that it was family organ. It was a family organization. It's not like, you know mm -hmm. how you get some organizations will they'll tell you something and it's something totally different it's not like that with fleet like once i did my interview like they lived up to what they were saying like with me putting in the effort with networking with different people i uh, had so many people branch out to me and reach out to me with so many different opportunities like a lot of opportunities so um anytime i have a question it don't take but a second for me you know to hit somebody up like hey uh, this happened or I need some help with this like with first class when getting back into modeling I really didn't have like price listing. so 
So, you know, I hit her up, uh, sat, sat down, chopped it up with her, and we got my price listing together. Right. So it's she not one question through. that I couldn't <laughs> reach out to somebody and they wouldn't help me. Definitely, definitely. So also heard you said uh, you was a bartender? Yes. How long have you been doing that? I've been doing that for about two years. So what's more of the rush, the bartending or the model? I know they both got their own little worlds and both got their own little excitement. So, you know what I mean? I'm going to have to say bartending. <laughs> it be crazy. Oh, my gosh. And with bartending, you know, you see all type of personalities when people start getting drinks in their system. Right, right. So, you definitely get a rush, especially if somebody done called out. Yeah. You a heavy pour? So, I'm trying. No, no, I ain't gonna say. You ain't got a lot because because I went to school with. I went to school for it. So at my okay. job, I'm doing. I'm doing what I need to do at my job to make sure you know their percentage with liquor and all that adding up. Right, but sure. me, I got my own personal bar at home. You come through. You tell me how you want. It. You want it light. You want it medium. You want it heavy. I got you. Damn. Now, if you that... want it heavy, you gonna have to sleep on the couch because I can't let you go home. I gotta look at your pupils <laughs> to see if they dilated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. All right, my last question. Uh, since you got it all in the crib, what's your uh, your best drink that you make that you can make? My best drink that I can make. Um, I would say a lemon drop martini. A lemon drop martini. Um, what that consists of. That consists of fresh squeezed lemon juice, sugar, um, one and a half ounce of vodka, and an ounce of triple sec. You know that shit, ain't she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she I think she's. I think she's gonna run through it like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> half ounce of this teaspoon, a little sprinkle of that, and <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> salt bay type shit. You yeah. know, <laughs> on top of her game, ain't she? Hell yeah. Hey, well, definitely welcome to the fam, man. I just wanted to know what you see what's going on. Okay, <laughs> thank you. A little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> speaking, of drinking, speaking of drinking, man, the good thing is, is that, uh, you know, she jumped on a different call and, you know, she was able to lock in. Uh, but, you know, other people. So on that call, we had the Bottega family on there, you know, who actually sp uh, sponsored the Goat Vibe. So we definitely be... Uh, Doing oh, yeah, she was the one that was working. That's right. Yeah. Right? yeah. I dare her say she was at work. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Got you. We'll definitely be uh doing work with her, you know, hopefully getting her inducted into the Bottega Babes and have her representing the Bottega with Liquid Metals, along with a couple other uh models uh doing champagne as well. So that's one good thing. All right, y'all, and a big shout out to, you know, Swag 100, you know, DJ Swag, you know, get at them, y'all. This your girl, Pretty Diamond.